I think it's safe to say Marcus Foligno will be dropping the gloves a little bit more this season. We take a look at what to expect from the Wilds Enforcer today on Locked on Wilds. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we take a look at Marcus Felino's expectations for the 2022-2023 season. We recap what happened for him in 2021-2022. A lot of different things happened for Marcus Foligno throughout the season, so we'll take a look at that, his stats, projections, and some of the storylines surrounding Moose heading into this season. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with well over a decade's worth of experience covering your favorite Minnesota sports teams guiding you through the preseason here on Locked on Wild. We're talking Marcus Foligno today, the enforcer, and uh, what to expect from Moose for this coming season. It was a career high in goals for Marcus Foligno this past year, but it was very much a disjointed season for Moose as uh, he put up career highs across the board in the offense department a uh, career-high 23 goals, a career-high 19 assists, and uh, a career-high 42 points. He also shot the puck a career-high 99 times. And uh, even with not a whole lot of shots, considering the fact that uh, the Wild play uh, that the uh, Wild forward played in 74 games, not a whole lot of shots, but uh, the shot percentage for Felino very, very good. Uh, astronomical if you uh, even want to go that far and um, 238 hits on the season which is uh, near his career high so uh, a very physical but successful season for Marcus Felino. but there's just there was a lot going on with Felino uh, this past season as is typically the case with Marcus you had the acquisition of Nick Delorier and I remember the the wording around the Delorier acquisition being Delorier wanted to come in and be the guy that went to the penalty box so that Marcus Foligno could stay on the ice more and assist the team that way. Because as much as we think of Foligno as a physical defensive presence and a very good one at that, he has become a very underrated offensive option for this team. Uh, as double-digit goals over the last now three seasons with the Wild and uh, had 11 goals in 39 games last season and was well on his way to establishing a career high before he got hurt, tried to come back at the end of the year. And now this year, there were points where it looked like he was uh, trying to play through some sort of an injury. Didn't really hear anything in terms of surgeries in the offseason for Felino, so nothing major but um, at the end of the day he had um, it just kind of seemed like Felino got taken out of his element he had the suspension um, against the Winnipeg Jets uh, that was all the way back in February so Felino ended up getting suspended for two games he came back and just was not the same player for a while after that you bring in Nick Delorier, who is supposed to be the uh, the enforcer guy. That didn't really work out that much. And uh, I think the overarching theme of what to expect from Felino this season is just to get back to what you're good at. And yes, you never want somebody to um you never want somebody to be in the penalty box. You don't want a player like Marcus Felino to be taken off the ice, whether it be, you know, going toe-to-toe with somebody who 
hits Kirill Kaprizov and the team takes exception to it or anything along those lines. That's just who Marcus Foligno is. I mean, we've seen him Superman punch. We've seen any number of other things. Marcus Foligno is the bodyguard for this team. And I think it kind of got in his head a little bit being taken out of that role because it is one that he has played for a while. And so having him focus on, you know, just the offense and the defense without having any of that other stuff and, you know, trying to, I guess, avoid the physicality a little bit, just, I think, took him out of whack. And so big thing for Marcus is to just get back to all of that. Yes, ultimately want him to be on the ice as long as possible, but there just are going to be times where he's going to, uh, he's going to do something that uh, results in a penalty. You want to minimize that, but at the end of the day, you don't want to take somebody out of their natural fit. Uh, and so uh, if Felino can get back to being that guy and also chipping in on the offensive end as much as he has been, he's going to have uh, another dynamite season for this team. You know, you look at the playoffs as well for Felino. He, uh, he got hit in the final game of the season. Uh, Curtis McDermott of the Avalanche uh, crunched him up against the boards. And so uh, I think part of that was Felino trying to gut through what looked like a serious injury at the time. Uh, so some of his postseason performance, I think, can be attributed to that. End of the day, we've we've discussed the playoff series against the Blues enough that it was a collective failure by the team that uh, that led to them not winning that series. But I think for Felino, he was definitely battling some uh, some bumps and bruises in that series. So main expectation and objective for Felino is to just get back to being that uh, that bodyguard for this team. And if he does that, then I think this team's going to be in really good shape. Uh, and I think Felino will uh, will have a more complete season for this team um, after a very segmented season that we saw this past year. So uh, those are the expectations. We will move to the stats projections. You'd be surprised to know that there isn't expected to be a lot of drop in Marcus Foligno's numbers. We'll talk about that coming up next here on Locked on Wilds. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, plus team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, golf, and soon the NBA and the NHL. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. All that can be found at BetOnline, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen of the day, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast as we ramp up for the start of the regular season. Just like Locked on Wild, Locked on NHL is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, let's talk stats because Marcus Foligno, one of those guys that had a career high in pretty much every category that matters um, for the Wild this past season. So uh, looking at the projections for him uh, for this year, Foligno, based off of the... Uh, ESPN Fantasy Hockey projections for this season is slated to play in 75 games, slated to score 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points, and to uh, contribute a plus 21 on the ice. Little dip in penalty minutes, little dip in power play points uh, from 112 penalty minutes to 94, from seven power play points to four uh, uh, power play points. Average time on the ice is forecasted for 15 minutes, 30 seconds. And his shots on goal actually expected to go up 
to uh, 103. So we talked previously in the offseason about if the career seasons for these guys is sustainable heading into the season. And, you know, I was listening to the Bardown Beauties podcast the other day, and um, an interesting topic was was brought up from uh, from Jesse Pierce, a friend of mine, um, who is uh, celebrating her birthday today when this is being recorded. Happy birthday, Jesse. Um, it was brought up that, you know, a lot of the attribution for these career seasons was a couple of things more time on the ice, as was the case for Marcus Foligno, more offensive opportunities, Kirill Kaprizov getting as much attention as he did, uh, you know, those line combinations getting mixed together on the power play, players playing all up and down the ice depending on the situation, Kaprizov drawing attention in instances where guys like Foligno are on the ice, going to mean that he's going to have an opportunity to do something with the puck. And so you look at what is going to happen this season, and let's look at the circumstances to start the year. Jordan Greenway is going to be out between five and 10 games to start the season. So I think it's safe to say that guys like Marcus Foligno, especially from that grief line, depending on who takes Greenway's place, I think it's safe to say that those guys are going to play additional minutes uh, to start the year to try to offset some of the lack of Greenway on the ice. So I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with the reduction in minutes for Marcus Foligno. I think he's an important enough player to where he will get a similar level of minutes that he got last year maybe a little bit of an uptick. And so I don't see his production dropping in that regard. You also look at his shooting percentage, 23.5%, and his shooting percentages as a member of the Minnesota Wild are just, well, forgive the pun, they're wild. 7.7% uh, in 2018, 2019, and 82 games. 12.8% in 2019, 2020 in 59 games, 27.5% in 2020, 2021 in 39 games. And this last year in 74 games, 23.5% on the season. So he just has become a player that has not shot as frequently, but has made the shots that he's taken count. And so he's not going to shoot the puck all that much. So yes, there is possibility that if he doesn't score as many goals, his shooting percentage is going to certainly go down. Um, but I think it'll stay relatively similar, uh, especially if he plays right around that 74, 75 games mark. I think it's safe to say that we could expect a similar level of shots. And so if you, if you go with over 100 like ESPN is suggesting. If you shoot 20%, uh, even 20% from uh, from that 100 shots, you know, that's still going to give you a uh, very good amount of goals. It's still going to, you know, it's still going to give you right around um, what he had this past season. So I don't I don't see there being this huge precipitous drop in goals. And so I think you can count on right around 15 and up for Felino this, uh, this next season. Now the big one, because I think the wild are really going to retool this power play. We've seen some of that already to start the season. Uh, he didn't have five power play goals and two power play assists on the season. Now, some of that was filling in and, Who's not to say that Felino can't be a member of that second power play unit? One of the two. So maybe he does still get a handful of power play chances. But I do think that uh, there are going to be some focal points on this wild power play this season. And those will be the guys that will get a large volume of the shots. But 
right back to the point that has been Bill Guerin's big one since he started putting this roster together is it's not one player. It's the collective team. And that, you know, to further the point that we made, that has led to a lot of guys getting a high uptick in opportunities because this team has not been reliant on one guy. And so with Kevin Fiala not here, we would expect that a good portion of that scoring is going to be taken care of by Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi. But those opportunities are still going to be there for some guys to step up and take. And so who's to say that Felino won't take some of those uh, into his own uh, account here this season? So I'm going to say that uh, Felino will finish the season right around where he was at this past year. You know, he probably won't get to 42 points. I feel like 35 is a really good number. And so I would maybe lean slightly over that, especially if Felino plays 75 or more games this year. So I'm going to take slightly over. I'll put Felino down for, put him down for 38. Let's go 38 points. I think he gets 17 goals, 21 assists on the season. And so uh, I think he has a similar season to what he had this past year, but I think this is just kind of what we're seeing from Felino here as he uh, moves into his thirties is that he just has a little bit more to offer offensively. And so uh, let's, let's bank on that here for this season and uh, hope he is able to match it. Now we talked about the biggest factor, biggest expectation for Felino coming into this season and so uh, let's finish today's episode by looking at some of the storylines that are surrounding Felino uh, here this season. And so uh, we'll take a look at a couple of those to finish up today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, just a reminder. Locked on NHL podcast for your second listen. And if you haven't already, make sure to follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts and also hit subscribe on YouTube. Turn those notifications on so you don't miss any videos throughout the rest of the preseason into the regular season. It's going to be here before you know it. Storylines for Marcus Felino heading into this season, and this will be one that will also be mentioned with Jewel Erickson Eck. With Jordan Greenway out to start the season, what does that third member of the grief line look like? And how much do Felino and Erickson Eck pick up the slack to, uh, to try to keep that line humming? Is one of the best and most dangerous defensive lines, not just in the Central Division, not just in the Western Conference, one of the best defensive lines in the entirety of the NHL. It is that dangerous of a, uh, a tactic for Dean Evison to use when needed. But that line seems to really function at its best when all three members are healthy and are uh, on that same line together. There just isn't that same bite and punch to it, especially without Greenway, it seems like. You know, you subtract Marcus Felino, you subtract Jewel Erickson Eck, those other two pieces are there. And yeah, it's not the same performance, but it seems like when Greenway is gone from Erickson Eck and Felino, that is when that line takes the uh, the biggest drop. So what will we see from that line? What will we see to kind of step up and lead the way from Felino and from Erickson Eck, I think is uh, an interesting storyline to watch to start the season. Now, another one that I will mention is because you're coming off of an offseason in which you l trade Kevin Fiala, you trade Cam Talbot, and this team is minus those two uh, and a couple of other changes. This team is attempting to run it back here um, this season. If things don't go according to plan, Marcus Foligno is one of the alternate captains on this team. How much will he be looked upon to try to kind of keep this group 
on course, especially with some younger players that will be part of the mix? How much do they look to him uh, as being a leader, as being the only one of the either captain or alternate captains that is a forward? Marco Rossi is certainly going to be uh, in the NHL room for the first time. And so uh, those guys are going to be looking to him to lead. And so uh, how much of that comes into play, especially if the, uh, the season starts off a little rocky, can that group of captain and alternate captains uh, keep this thing, keep this thing between the navigational beacons to try to get back on track? And, um, you know, are, are they able to do that? If things are going well, you know, how, uh, how does that play? into the uh, equation also. Uh, the other one, of course, we've tried to kind of tie in the contract aspect to many of these. Uh, Felino is not, um, Felino's not really in any danger over the next couple of seasons, at least, to be moved. He has uh, this year, he has next year, and then he's an unrestricted free agent uh, before the 2024-2025 season. Now, that will be the final of the most lean seasons for the uh, the cap, salary cap, uh, dead cap hits. So, a couple years down the road, does Marcus Foligno get an extension? You know, that just throw him in with all the other players that are going to be wondering about their futures with this team in that same vein. Um, after that season, that's when everything is uh, kind of a sigh of relief. 2025-2026 is when those buyouts are clear. And um, it, at this point, is a pretty much a blank canvas for the, uh, the Minnesota Wild. They only have, as of right now, they only have four players who would be on the roster, under contract in 2025-2026. And uh, that is at just under $28 million in uh, salary cap for those four guys. So it's mostly a blank canvas. How many of these veteran guys last to that point and get an extension? In Felino's case, does he get another one after two years? He'll be 33 going on 34 at that point. So... I guess the big storyline just continues to be like, what does Felino's play continue to look like? Can he continue this upward trend of being more of an offensive piece to this team, or do we see some of that start to uh, to pull back uh, a little bit as well? So uh, a lot of interesting things to keep an eye on for Marcus Felino, who, as we've said, is one of the more I think unsung portions of this team he represents you know the the physicality almost exclusively there are a couple of other guys that like to drop the gloves Brandon Duhame Jake Middleton Matt Dumba but Felino I think is the one that embodies that the most on this team and so it would be weird to envision this roster without him there but that's we're getting a little bit ahead of the game there, uh, there's plenty of time to deal with that before we have to um, after the next two seasons. So we're just going to enjoy Marcus Foligno on this team for now, and hopefully he is primed for a big season for this team and can continue what has been a nice little kind of offensive renaissance for him over the last few seasons. So best of luck to Moose. Hit him hard all season, and uh, let's see him have another very solid season here in 2022-2023. That is going to wrap it up for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the NHL. The Locked on NHL podcast is free and available wherever you listen to your podcast, just like Locked on Wild. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube Turn those notifications on so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos all throughout the week and all throughout the preseason leading up to the start of the season just a couple of weeks away. We will keep you up to date with all things Minnesota Wild 
with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.